second slide. Yes, the topics. Design of t beams for negative moments. You remember in the previous lectures, we saw and we solved some examples for the design of t beams on their positive moments. Positive moments, it means at the middle span of the continuous beams or beams, at the middle of the span, which positive moments for us means we have tension at bottom of beam and compression at top of beam. Now under the negative moment, when we have a continuous beam, at the supports we have negative beam, negative moment. Negative moment means that tension is at top of beam and compression is at bottom of beam. It's opposite that situation that we had at middle of span. Or when we have a cantilever, for a cantilever, the same we have negative moment. Because tension is at top and compression is at bottom. It means that you should not put reinforcement or a steel bar at bottom. You should put at top where we have tension, when we have cracks due to tension. And also we see some example on there. Design of T-beams for negative moments. When T-beams or any beam are resisting negative moments, their flange will be in tension and the bottom of their stems or webs will be in compression, as we see in the next slide in a figure. It's clear that for such situation, the rectangular beam design for us will be used when the neutral axis is at the web. Uh, let's see, next slide, and I explain on that. You see here, the section of one T-beam, that it's under the negative uh, moment, and this is the location of neutral axis. Therefore, here at top, we have tension. because it's not positive moment, is uh, it's under the negative moments. Therefore we neglect this one, you know, the concrete is neglected over here. When concrete is neglected, we don't consider that one. Okay, the part that we consider as compression for concrete is only here. The other tension concrete values are neglected. Therefore, and the reinforcement are at top tensile reinforcement. If I change the color and also pen, you see that we neglected the tension, therefore the compression is here. We can say that our section that we can design, it can be like this. And this is a rectangular. At this situation, when we have neutral axis at web, 
the design is exactly like rectangular beam. But don't forget Don't forget, this time the width of the rectangular section is BW, not B. You remember for positive moment when neutral axis it was at flange. If the new axis was at flange, you remember, or positive one. That time it was rectangular, but rectangular with a width of B, not BW. It was total. We consider this one as rectangular section. And it was the rectangular design with a width of B. It was when we had positive moment. If you have a positive moment and this one, the blue one is for positive moment when M was positive. And that time, for rectangular, we used a width of B. But when we have uh, M negative, the beam is under negative moment. This case, is the design is rectangular, but this rectangular has a width of BW. It's very important, don't miss them, please. This was case one that we saw in previous lectures. <coughs> when M was positive, In that case, we used B as V of the section. But now for negative moment, we use BW. This is the difference. This is for when the uh, beam with flange intention and bottom hash one is in compression. Therefore you see the difference. Therefore we finished the T beam. Now let's see L beam. What is L beam? <coughs> you remember when we have a slab and the beam is at the corner of the building. You saw that. We say this is L beam. Why L? Because if you consider let me show you by another color again. Consider a part of the slab 
work with the beam, we have a, an a L shaped beam like this. This is L. Perform one L beam for us. Like L, not T. Okay, for L beam, the design of L beam is exactly like T beam by one difference. What is the difference? The difference is in value of B. You remember that the value of B was spent by AC by code or by code given. We have these different values, minimal that give us a B. Now we have similar but different values. Let's uh, see what are those. Uh, therefore, the design of L beams is exactly like T beams with one difference. That is the width of the beam. For L beam, let me select one. Color. Okay. For L beam. The effective weight uh, width, which is B, we have B for the TV as well, mm, should not be larger than one twelfth of a span length. Therefore, B first should be less than one tenth of a span length. It is L the span length over 10. This is one criteria. And then the second one, the length of B. Six times of a slab thickness. Therefore B should be less than six times of a slab thickness we call the height of flange for the beam six times of hf six times the slab thickness or one half of the clearance distance and also B should be less than S over 2. If I say a spacing between the beams it should be less than S over 2. These are the values given. B for us is minimum of minimum value of these three equations or values. What was length? Length is clear, a span length or a slab or beam. This is if it's simple beam or anything, this is L, scalar. One tenth of this one. Mm. 
what is the S if you have a section of beam? This is L beam, perhaps another T beam, and continues. It's pay attention, it's written clear span. Clear distance, it means inside to inside or face to face. This is S for us. Therefore, this is the value of B. The other formulas, equations, approaches is exactly like TV. When you say the design of LV, exactly use the formulation and equation of TV means, except the value of B is different. And B will be the minimum of this three value, where L is span length and S is distance between clear distance between the adjacent beams. I hope it's clear and is enough. Now we start another topic, which is doubly reinforced uh, beams. So let me show you one sketch first. Here you see that in this section, in addition to tension and reinforcement, we have compression reinforcement as well. Imagine that this is the neutral axis. And this is the compression zone under the positive moment. This is compression zone, and this is tension that we neglect. Why we put uh, reinforcement? Because uh, reinforcement steel is ex more expensive than concrete. Why we should put there? When there are limitation of height, we wanted to apply the limitation of height. What does it mean? It means that, especially architects doesn't, uh, don't like to see the beams. Uh, perhaps you like that as engineers. Wow, you have very nice beams. But they don't like that. And the people doesn't like and don't care what are those. Therefore, they should be hidden in the ceiling or has minimum uh, height out of the ceiling. Okay, when you limit this height, the stresses goes up, especially everywhere, especially at this compression zone. And the value of concrete is not enough to resist that load. We need the help and support and arming and reinforcement with uh, compression concrete, compression steel. So in addition to that, we have, in addition to tension steel, we have compression steel as well. This is the idea. Therefore, the steel that is occasionally used on the compression sides of beams 
is called compression stick. And then we move ten and compress it still to as the reinforced piece. Therefore, compression is not normally required in design by the strength method or other. I guess the method the same name, whereas it already decidedly increases the need for such reinforcement as compared to the design made with the working stress design. Let's go and see, okay, how we design such beams. For the design of such beam, we divide the section that we have by, we say, is equal to one section just we have tension ST and we have compression Compression of concrete of the beam. Actually, we divide AS two parts. One part is AS one, which make one couple moment with concrete compression concrete and give us, as you remember, the moment and Z as we saw before. Therefore, for this part, if we have MN, we call MN1 equals T, you remember, times Z. And T is T1 actually. And this is Z1. Therefore, I call this one Z1, this one T1. And T1 equals AS1 times FY. And Z equals D, the overall depth from here to here which is D and minus A over 2. What is A over 2? A was from here to here. The depth of concrete under the compression Stress therefore from here because the force for this uh, rectangular compression part is at the center of this compressive strength horizontal zone from here should be A over 2. Therefore, Z1 equals D minus A over 2. This is the thing that we have. This is part 1 that we saw this one before as a normal rectangular section with tensile reinforcement. Now, we are adding 
to another part which this part is second part you saw that it's shown by dash lines why dash lines because we don't have concrete here just we have a steel tensile steel and compression steel actually steel and steel give us one couple one force here that I call that one T2 and we have one uh, compression force here that we can call that I don't know CS due to a steel and this one was actually we can call that CC compression force due to compression concrete or concrete the second C is for concrete this here is for steel and again you see that the Z2 is between the force T actually T2 up to CS up to here and again this is overall from here to here you remember it was D it was D Therefore, Z is D minus D prime. We can say that MN2, the nominal moment due to tensile and compressive steels are, this is, for example, T2, times Z2 therefore you know that sometimes compression steel is not under stress of yielding strength we write that a prime S but we should check and we wish that it goes to Fy. If two different cases may happen, always tensile steel should go to the Fy. But for compression, it may we have there Fy or may not go to F prime S. We should check the strain at that steel and should decide which case we have for this reason for understanding better i given here two examples that you see and you will see how we solve different cases therefore this is the doubly that we has broken that into two parts one part shows at figure B that it was concrete against steel and other part at C, figure C, that is steel against steel. This is the idea. And we write the nominal moment of the section that we have, W reinforced section, equals MN1 due to the First one that we can put it at this on here plus the second one 
which is here. And we calculate that. I hope it's clear and understand what is that. Now, explaining a little more, up to this point, it has been assumed that the compression steel has reached its yield stress. If such is the case, the values of AS2 and AS prime, AS prime actually is the compression steel area. It will be equal because the addition to T, the tensile force of AS2 FY for the second one must be equal to the additional addition to C of S prime Fy for equilibrium. Therefore, we are talking mainly about S prime and S2. That in the equilibrium case, because we should have T equal Cs. So the area should be the same because if we have Fy, so it is given normally talking about these two. Okay, let's continue. Combine the two values that we had, as I mentioned, Mn. Mn equals Mn1 plus Mn2. Therefore, you remember that design ultimate strength, which was Mu, it was Phi times Mn and Mn was nominal or theoretical testing moment of second I have been factor as for Ben Kings nine provided that if prime C is lesser than or equal to four thousand PSI. You remember that one we have care, etc. But for here, we can find mu phi times mn1 plus mn2. The addition of compression steel only on the compression side of a beam will have little effect on the nominal resistance moment of the section. The lever arm Z of the internal affected very much by the presence of the compression steel. And the value of T, the tension force, remains the same. Us value of an element of a section is necessary to add the reinforcing on both tension and the compression sides of the beam, thus providing another resisting moment coupling. Okay, let's see more details in next slide. Now, to examine 
And in these two examples, we will show that the calculation involved in determining the design strength of double reinforced steel. In each of the plans, the strain at prime S, strain at compression of the steel, is to determine whether or not it's yielded. Then we check a prime S is less than Fy or Fy or equal Fy, that means. The compression steel stress, which is a prime S, is determined. And the value of AS2 for compression steel, when we have steel against steel, is compared with the following compression. AS2 times Fy equals AS prime Fy. It means actually we consider AS2 equals AS prime. Therefore, we had discussion over epsilon t, you remember? Epsilon t, it was a strain at tensile strain, uh, tensile reinforcement. If it was lesser than 0, 0, 5, 5 per thousand, we saw that we cannot consider either 509, if greater than 09. And then we, we see it's the section and also if epsilon t is less than epsilon t, if it's lesser than on y, the yielding strain of steel. Now we see it means that the reinforcement is not yielded. We have a primacy, not y. Therefore, we see an example these things very well. Two examples we will see. Two cases will happen when, let's see here. Initially, the stress in the compression steel is assumed to be at the yield. This is the first assumption. We consider the prime C equals, prime S equals a Y. From the figure that we have, we can find the summing of forces, horizontal forces in the diagram force and submitting beta one, you remember, times C it was A. And beta one, you remember, it was 0 0.85 for some cases and we had other values for the others. Actually, from summation of Fx zero horizontally, we find T, this is T equals T1 and T2. T1 it was, or you can have put here C1. And because of the concrete and plus S prime F5 to 2 compression steel. Then from here we can find C. If we found C, you remember from similarity of the strains at section, we found we can find uh, 
epsilon prime at compression steel. Let me show you how we find that. If you see, we should add value here. This shows the strain at compression steel. Therefore, this is strain at compression steel by this value on the strain. You know, in always linear, it's like at least we assume that one. You know, I in the strain design and we call that epsilon u according to the ACI code is three per thousand or 0.003. Now, considering the location of neutral axis here, the neutral axis location, you see C is from the neutral axis up to the extreme fiber of compressive concrete here at the top. And you know, if we consider the prime from the center of the compression steel to this value, from the located center of steel up to the neutral axis is clear that this is C minus D prime. C minus D prime. Now, if you see similarity of two cells that one of them is the biggest one, top, this one, and one is another one. Let me show another one. By perhaps green. The second rectangular is from here to here. The small one. Let me make it hashed like this. This one. Therefore, the similarity of these two triangles give us one. Equation. I can write, for example, epsilon prime s, epsilon prime s too high here to here. This high which is C minus D prime. Equals from the similarity of triangles. This value, which is epsilon U, or zero zero three 
زیرو پایین زیرو زیرو تری over the height overall height from here to here overall height which is C from here easily we can find epsilon prime s Therefore, epsilon prime s for us is found here. You can write, for example, c minus d prime over c times zero point zero zero three therefore you will find this equation that we found in previous one here you see we found exactly the same equation why we find this fun? We wanted to see what is the situation of yielding at compression steel by this one. If epsilon prime, we compare epsilon prime with epsilon y. Epsilon y is the yielding strain of steel and we can apply here the Hooke's law and relate, uh, make it relation with the stress and modulo elasticity. If the strain in the compression steel, which is F primes S, is greater than F y, epsilon Y, which is just yielding a stress, a strain of a steel, which from the Hooke's law, we can say it is a pi over epsilon uh, ES, modulo elasticity here. The assumption is valid for a prime S is at yield. Therefore, when we consider f prime s equals f y, it was okay. Another case, this was first case, second case. If epsilon prime s is less than f epsilon y, the compression still is not yielding. And the value of c calculated above is not correct. A new equilibrium must be written and that assuming that, that assumes that a prime S is less than a Y. In this case, for the second case, we should write a S F Y equals the compression of force plus a prime s times epsilon prime s actually this is epsilon prime s that we found here Okay, so what is this? 
actually this is a stress why you know from hooke's law sigma equals epsilon e or e epsilon strain times modulo of elasticity and then that one adding modulo of elasticity here before this was actually epsilon prime s and if you put here a prime s Yes, so epsilon, epsilon prime s for compilation is the times e. What is e? e of steel, not concrete. Therefore, applying the Hooke's law, this was Hooke's law, you remember? Okay, instead of fs, because you know that this is a t equals a s or a prime s times f prime s actually. And for us, f prime s as a term of epsilon prime s, which was this part, times modulo of elasticity of steel, which is this part. Therefore, we don't have Fy here. We know that any stress can be, but it is in this case, it is less than uh, epsilon y. Therefore, two different cases. You remember that we saw before as well epsilon s Jump to the other one. You know that I hope you can write doesn't change the mood. Yes. Epsilon prime, uh, a modulo of elasticity of steel is 29 million psi, which equals 29,000 ksi. Why? Because keeps is 1,000 pound. Keeps is kilo pound, actually. Therefore, you have this value to apply in the examples and programs. Yes, therefore we saw the time here as and now we should see one example. Let me see anyone waiting for Ajwan and joining to the lecture or not. No. We have 35 students now at lecture. Okay, let's see two examples. One example, the comparison is still is not yielded. 
is yielded, the other is not yielded. Therefore, we see two different examples for different two different cases that we have. First example, determine the design moment capacity, MU, of the beam shown in the figure for which Fy is 60,000 PSI and F prime C 3,000 PSI. Therefore, you see that in this section, we have a rectangular section, doubly reinforced, comparison is steel, number and size is given, two number nine, and you found, you can find, and you have found before, always is from table. The tension steel also given for number 11. You find area of around the table, remember. <clears throat> and D, don't forget, don't mix up from the center of tensile steel up to the top, which is extreme fiber of uh, concrete in compression. This is D. For, <clears throat> for us, D is this height plus this one. Or total height minus concrete cover. Therefore, you see that 27 minus 3 it is 24. Inches. Okay, writing the equilibrium equation, but first, as usual, we assume Fs prime S equals Fy. We assume that the compression steel is yielded. And we write the equilibrium Ts, etc. T and Cs plus that one. And when we apply the values, the only unknown here is C. For beta 1, because the prime S is less than 4000 PSI, beta 1 was 0 0.85. And the others, we apply the values that we have. After finding C, we can calculate A. Because A has a relation between C with a factor less than 1, which is beta 1. Therefore, we find A as well. When we find A and having C, we can find epsilon prime S means a strain of compression steel. You remember we found from the similarity of the triangles of strain profile and with application we find something about two per thousand or 0 0.00211. If we apply the Hooke's law and find the strain of a steel when it is yielded, actually epsilon y, the yield strain of a steel by applying a y and modular velocity of a steel, 29,000 and 60,000 psi. We find a value slightly smaller than 
epsilon prime s that we found here. Therefore, it means that this compression still is yielded and the assumption was correct. This is one example. Therefore, here, tranquilly, we apply the value of y in the equation. Therefore, you remember that from the equilibrium between T and TS2 and, for example, uh, when yielded or not, we can calculate AS2 from this one, and we find some value for AS2. And you know that AS is the summation of AS2 and S1. Therefore, S1 can be calculated from uh, deducting S2 from S. When we apply the values, we find S1 as well. And now we check for phi. Is it phi 0, 9 or not? Again, we should calculate epsilon t. Before we calculate epsilon, epsilon prime s for checking is it yielded or not, now we should calculate epsilon t, a strain at tens, tension still, not at compression. Okay, we had another similarity between the strain diagram we saw before in the previous lectures. We apply the values and we find more than five per thousand slightly more, about 10% more, is greater than 5 per thousand, 0 0.005, it means a phi, equal, a phi equals 0 0.9. Now we apply the formula to find mu. The ultimate strength of the section or design ultimate strength section. We use reduction factor phi and you remember we had T1, Z1 plus T2, Z2. We apply the values, we find the results in inch kips. We divide the result by 12, we find the result in foot kips. And that's so. Therefore, in the first example, luckily, or I don't know, by accident, everything, the compression still is yielded. And we don't have any problem. Directly, instead of the prime S, we put a phi. That's all. Let's see another example. <clears throat> In this example, you will see that the compression steel will not yield. Therefore, we cannot use Fi should use a prime S. And because of that, we should use the Hooke's law and apply a prime S and ES. Therefore, it's written in this example that compute the design moment strength, again MU, not MN. Of the section shown in the figure, in this case, a Y is 60,000 PSI and changed a prime S if compared to the previous example. It was 3,000, now it's 4,000. When you have more compression resisting, it means less need for steel. Or we have steel, less stress is, is in that. 
Okay, again, the same D, B, etc. you know, AS is given. As usual, when we write the equilibrium, we assume first a prime S equals a phi. Means a stress at compression steel is yield stress. The compression steel is yielded. Every assumption should be verified. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense, it's not correct. If we apply the equation of equilibrium that we had before, and again, the only unknown here is C, we calculate the value of C, defined 5.72 inches, and we calculate A again, beta 1 times C, we find A. For checking either, uh, checking the condition of the stress at compression steel, is it yielded or not? Always we should calculate epsilon prime S, which is a strain at compression steel. You remember we found this equation. By application of the values, we find something about 1.7 per thousand. And when we calculate epsilon y, which is yield strength by applying the Hooke's law, we see that yield strength, yield strength is something about 2 per thousand. But epsilon prime s is less than that one. So it means that it still is not yielded. It means that we cannot assume a prime s equals a phi. Assumption was wrong. Assumption was wrong. What we should do, we should restart considering the real a prime s using a prime S and modular elasticity or Hooke's law. Since the assumption is not valid, you have to use the equilibrium equation that is based on a prime S not yielding a stress, not a phi. Okay. We write again the equilibrium. You remember this is T, this was C, that was equal somehow T, and this is actually T2, which is a prime S time, and this is totally for us a prime S. And when we apply a prime S, it has two terms. One was the elasticity and the other part was epsilon prime S. That's all. By applying the values, the only unknown again is C and we find from this equation C equals inches. We can A from beta one equal A equal beta one C. We find five point one inches. And then we calculate now epsilon prime s, which is a strain at compression steel. We find 
some one, um, value about 1.75 per thousand, which is less than epsilon y that we saw in um, top previous slide. We can collect directly a prime s from Hooke's law. Therefore, you know, if y was 60,000, it is 50,000 50, psi. Now we go and calculate a two. The difference between a s two and a s total still give us a s one. Therefore, you can put a s two at top of the section. If we have section here. Compression still can be calculated based on S2 and you know tension, the size and the numbers. are calculated based on AS total. But AS2 give us the compression reinforcement. Okay, for Checking the value of phi, is it 0, 0,9 or not, we calculate epsilon t, strain at tensile t. Therefore, we see that yes, it's nicely more than 5 per thousand, therefore, phi is 0, 0,9 is acceptable and we apply that. Finally, we calculate MU, ultimate strength, this ultimate design strength of the section, or design ultimate strength of section, which is phi time MN, MN was nominal resisting moment of the section. We found phi, we checked it was 0, 0,9, that's okay. The other values we consider, it was, you remember that, mn1 was t1, z1, and mn2 was t2, z2. By applying the values, we will find mu, in inch kips and we convert that to fit kips by dividing by 12. Therefore, I think we have enough on this subject. W reinforced concrete, we gave the formulas, we gave the concepts, we saw two examples for different cases. First case, the compression steel was yielded. Therefore, the prime S was directly a phi, no problem. For the second one, we checked the strain at compression steel. It was not yielded. It was less than epsilon y, which is the strain at yielding the stress, stress point of the steel. Therefore, what we do, we use Hooke's law and we find a prime S equals epsilon prime S times ES, modular elasticity. And we follow the case and find the design ultimate strength of the section, MU.
I have uploaded two not bad videos. You can see them, give you ideas and more practice. And don't forget, as homework, please solve similar problem given in the problems section of the reference book. And please prepare yourself for next week exam. I have announced everything in the use beam. Please go and read the steps and make prepare how to write the exam online, how to upload. Everything is written there. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Take care and be safe. We need you all. Thank you very much as good engineers. Thank you very much.